Hello everybody, uh, my name is Voldemar, I'm casting you from Kyiv, uh, it's a bit rainy today and today we'll speak about uh, Kubernetes things, Terraform things and stuff that we used to work with uh, in our company, uh, Shout. Uh, a few words about me, I'm working with Linux and all kind of Unix stuff for, for more than 18 years. Uh, I have 10 years experience in large enterprises and something like uh, great uh, business applications that are also both complex and uh, interesting, but my heart always uh, with open source. and. For the last 11 years, uh, I'm the founder and CTO of uh, Shout.com. It's the company which uh, the abbreviation for security, high availability, and load balancing. And we found that was my uh, teammate uh, Alexander 11 years ago. And now we are quite success in, uh, successful in that and we'll work a lot with CNCF and uh, CNCF landscape products. So uh, today we'll speak regard, uh, about infrastructures, infrastructures, uh, modern infrastructures uh, that are quite complex. Uh, I think everybody know that MAP uh, with cloud native uh, stuff and it's so large that uh, some guys even create uh, this puzzles from from it and I think uh, each year it could be uh, it could got more than two more uh, twice more members uh, since open source software are developing quite fast and uh, some of that software got some investment and some software are commercial as one and uh, we see that that kind of uh, business is quite large uh, on global landscape. So that infrastructure things are really become complex. In late time we have a bit uh, simpler that everything could be run on one system and most of the services were monoliths and we doesn't bother with all that thousands and tons microservices and meshes and everything else that we already have. And uh, we need to manage that complexity and to manage that complexity we uh, need to understand what the challenges are from that perspective and uh, what we try to uh, find the most common uh, DevOps challenges uh, that are present at the uh, current moment. And from our perspective, uh, it's uh, the steps, uh, the things are in next uh, list. So the first one is that it's hard to integrate mul multiple tools and that tools goes with own design patterns so there is no some common design pattern across all uh, possible products and that uh, push us to create some wired things during the integration uh, phase and it become complex because uh, there is no, no such uh, common design patterns and there are some difference even between different uh, vendors and providers so uh, there are some new uh, new I, s I can say uh, new fields that uh, they that try to address that like open application in, in, in each initiative that uh, someone tries to uh, build everything in one uh, place and uh, maybe that's good for packaging uh, and user software but for integrating infrastructures using different components uh, we don't have anything so this uh, multiple tools should be integrated by your engineers, by uh, some vendors or everything else and the whole industry are baked with that. 
Uh, the next one is so the next challenge is versionating and testing resulting infrastructure sets. So when we create something that we could call the infrastructure, we need to uh, be sure that all version across all components are fixed and that fixed set is tested. So uh, because when we have a lot of moving parts, some parts could be tricky and when we upgrade for example some minor version it goes wrong and everything goes whole infrastructure become unusable because some minor changes in one small product so that's also one of the uh, actual devops challenge to keep everything uh, version versionated and uh, good tested and the results of the whole set of the infrastructure also we have the challenge that uh, we need to align development and operation delivery life cycles uh, they could be different and most of the companies that we are working for are uh, so software as a service vendors so uh, they deliver uh, own product uh, along with own infrastructure so when you buy something using SaaS that means that you are actually buying not only software but the part of infrastructure that are working uh, for your uh, software and uh, you need to align that process for development and uh, quite operation uh, delivery and that could be tricky part so that's one of the dope challenges that we have right now the next one is the customization complexity between different environments so sometimes we have some good set of uh, existing infrastructure in for example production but in development infrastructure we need to make some adjustment to save money or to scale to implement some tenancy additional tenancy because we have multiple teams multiple developers we need to have the different uh, release cycles for different environments so that uh, also could be complex and tricky thing and that's one of the challenges that we actually faced and the last but least uh, but not the least one is the business requirement tracking during development so sometimes it, that business requirement changes and we don't know uh, how to quickly react on them for example when uh, some business goes to their ops team and say hey guys now we are working with aws and for next three months we should move to azure and that's uh, from business perspective looks very simple thing but uh, from technical perspective that business requirements is very hard to match because uh, lifting shifting infrastructure from one cloud to another is very complex and tricky sometimes so that's uh, one of the common devops challenges that we actually have okay so what uh, could be the possible solution for uh, that complex CNCF world and uh, modern infrastructure world. Uh, the one of the possible ways is to get everything from one vendor. When we have like uh, AWS, uh, all infrastructure, all services from CI/CD till uh, and clusters and uh, delivery and CDNs goes from one vendor. Uh, possibly cloud vendor or like something we have in on-premise uh, like OpenStack and everything goes uh, from that standpoint uh, building uh, everything in one ecosystem even open source but uh, the one uh, which uh, has everything uh, on, in place from uh, like uh, IAM roles uh, till is it uh, till uh, it instances uh, like some blob storage and uh, something like that another possible solution uh, for that great complexity is to create own uh, platform and cloud native or cloud native teams so when we have a lot of uh, teams uh, that actually perform own uh, create own infrastructures for their 
uh, development, uh, production. Uh, sometimes we uh, invent bicycles several times, so we don't uh, reuse a uh, good approach, code, uh, code design, and mm, we don't use uh, something that uh, already done by other teams. It's uh, solved to address that uh, possible issue. We could create some uh, platform team that would create uh, the platform and uh, spread that platform uh, across uh, internal teams that will actually consume that platform and that infrastructure uh, would be updated and um, customized by uh, local operating operators so from each team but the common solution would uh, rely on that uh, platform team who would uh, perform uh, all design and uh, adopting uh, for all required tools. Uh, that, that approach is quite common and I think that is one of the most uh, right way how to build uh, infrastructures when you have large enterprise uh, and multiple uh, teams around that produce same things. Another possible solution is to build not only platform team uh, but also development team around tooling uh, that open source uh, called native tooling and perform treat that tooling uh, treat that product uh, that infrastructures as uh, end-user products. So when you treat that as end-user products, you, you could see that infrastructure, resulting infrastructure, resulting uh, things from different angles and you can uh, understand what potential issues could be uh, hidden in uh, some misconfiguration or how we can uh, fit our integration for different different uh, tools into a release cycle uh, that are known and predictable. So uh, let's go uh, and uh, let's go next and I'll tell you how we address that. So our inputs, uh, we are quite small company. Uh, we, uh, but we have a lot of environments and uh, for now we have more than 70 active production development infrastructures around the globe. Uh, our customers are very, uh, has uh, great requirements for availability and uh, if something goes wrong they are very unhappy and uh, most infrastructures are uh, mission critical ones so we can mm, perform any uh, downtime there and uh, that mm, becomes some challenging uh, things. Uh, for, for the per present moment we have 15 infrastructure development engineers uh, which works uh, to develop that 17 infrastructures. Uh, that infrastructures are around different clouds from AWS, from GCP, DigitalOcean, Azure, and uh, most of them, uh, more than 70% uh, utilize uh, Kubernetes as the primary orchestration system. Most of that infrastructures are covered with uh, infrastructure as a code approach using Terraform. So uh, not only Kubernetes as, as my topic uh, actually is, uh, uh, because most uh, infrastructures are in Terraform and uh, the trick is things that we need to mix something uh, in Terraform side uh, with uh, something inside Kubernetes. So we have a lot of integration uh, between that two technologies. And also we use a lot of uh, different CI CD systems uh, from like Jenkins, Bitbucket, HitLab, GitHub, 
everything else, everything you can imagine. And uh, the same with observability stacks. But observability stack is quite common. It's uh, ELK uh, for logging, uh, Prometheus, Grafana for monitoring, and uh, Jagger for metrics. And uh, we also use for metrics some uh, things uh, like uh, metric beats and uh, uh, tracing, uh, Jagger for tracing. So, yeah. And uh, that's quite a big zoo. We have uh, different, uh, very, very different requirements from that infrastructures. And uh, we need to cover them all. And we decide what we, how we can build our team around that challenge and uh, what should we do with all that to be more effective, to be more uh, productive uh, across uh, our tasks. So we tried, we choose the third approach. So we decide to build own tooling on top of our existing stacks. And uh, to use that tooling, we decide to start with the design, with the design of this uh, resulting tool. Uh, the design goals uh, that we faced uh, were very uh, pragmatic. So first is that we need strict and simple uh, concept for base environment, something that we can copy, paste, reproduce, uh, modify and use like atomic unit. So we have environment or infrastructure part that we call environment uh, that are autonomous and we need we can uh, modify it and uh, it's not tightly coupled with another uh, with other uh, infrastructure environment uh, things also one of the design goal that we need to cover all 100 percent of existing environments so we need to be sure that all customers that we have could fit into that pattern uh, why because uh, we'd like to unify our work across all environments and that's why we need to be sure that uh, all customer requirements uh, could be matched with one tool it's like several silver, silver bullet. Uh, also, we need strong and opinionated selection for tools and settings. I say that one of the complex problem is the problem of choice. So when you try to do, to select something, uh, you even go to your market and you, it's uh, hard to select what kind of milk you will go with. Yahotinske or Prostokwashen or <laughs> that we have in our stores, but uh, regarding uh, open source and cloud native world, we have a lot of different options uh, for the same uh, tool, like for CI CD systems, uh, we have at least 10 different options for orchestration. We could go with also with Kubernetes, non-Kubernetes, so like uh, like some ECS, Fargate, and other options. So we also could choose different clouds, uh, but uh, for some smaller patterns, we could choose the best uh, solution that are actually at the present moment. And that solution uh, could be covered with uh, good opionated settings uh, that product would be covered as opionated settings that uh, we are sure will play in our environment uh, more or less more or less uh, good also one of the design goals is that we need to have one implement one code style linking idea settings across, across all our engineers and that's the goal uh, that would uh, could uh, help us to extend our teams very quickly because you don't need to sh to 
invent something that already invented and all team use the same patterns for developing for linking and uh, even code style so that helps a lot uh, during pro during uh, development of own tool that everyone uh, fits some uh, good standards uh, that we actually support and uh, we'd like to have the single point of knowledge sharing uh, so when you create some software uh, you create this using pull request and that's one point where you can share your knowledge and another point that you can uh, create some documentation docs and you will understand that that docs uh, would be read uh, by, not by only your teammates but someone else and there are another uh, some uh, extended requirements for that part so this uh, single point of knowledge sharing is one of the uh, good goals that we actually faced and what we got on the result of that planning actually we get uh, several points that actually will cover our design plan and the first one that we need to get some strict uh, restrictions on how we describe things and yes we choose yum uh, not all guys are happy with that uh, decision but i think uh, we need some strict restriction uh, on design because uh, when you don't have it uh, you can go like uh, create and invent own uh, helm invent own janking six or invent something with templates uh, and it's a bit uh, not something that we uh, try to do but uh, yes uh, devops and yams are tied together because uh, we are mostly young engineers as, as we can say and we got that resulting uh, young manifest first one that describe actually if we have that cluster what is his name uh, what cloud uh, this infrastructure actually placed on what region vpc if we use some default domain uh, so we choose that we would have Kubernetes as default provisioner and we could pro provide Kubernetes different ways with Minikube, with EKS, with some uh, other options uh, and for that options we have different provis uh, provisioners uh, also we have add-ons for uh, that cluster and apps uh, that we would deploy on top, that on top of that infrastructure and we got some strict concerns regarding what each infrastructure should contain so definitely each infrastructure should contain infrastructure state configs and secret storage so we need to st store that somewhere uh, but first glance we saw that there's uh, buckets uh, from cloud providers is the good candidate there like s3 spaces uh, something else uh, because it's static it could be versioned and uh, it's easy to back up and easy to operate so also each infrastructure should uh, should have definition of uh, how networking is uh, working inside it and so when you whenever you need some private networks like vpc in your cloud or you don't this uh, or you can use existing that uh, requirements uh, goes to our design uh, next one each infrastructure should have a dns zone uh, even some technical dns zone that we can access our services uh, no matter where we spawn it uh, anyway we need that dns to be sure that uh, it got real address and we can uh, access it's not using some ips but uh, real dns also we decide that each infrastructure uh, should contain something that we can uh, run our workloads and for present moment i think kubernetes is a good candidate to run different kinds of workloads that you have 
from stateless to stateful and jobs batch workloads also so we ch uh, choose that kubernetes would be the central unit of our infrastructure too that because uh, it could run different workloads in different manner in different ways so that's quite logical for present moment also we need something that we could deploy uh, to that resulting cluster like some ci cd system and we need to have that also declarative so we need that continuous deployment could perform using uh, declarative manner and the next step uh, that we need each on each infrastructure that user management system so we need to add remove modify users uh, change their rights uh, change their permissions uh, using some uh, also declarative user management solution and possibly we need to support uh, like a modern uh, user management things like SSO and uh, single sign-on and uh, legacy ones like LDAP and everything else. Okay, let's move next. Uh, the next design approach that we actually have that infrastructure are deployed and signed with application uh, deliver it as docker container so we think that we should pack everything to the docker because it ha it could be run as cli tool it could be run from ci cd pipelines it use it could use uh, some external reconciliation like uh, kubernetes operator airflow or anything that could run uh, docker containers and that is the gitops approach that we actually use so uh, when you can run something uh, using containers uh, and it's uh, quite monolithic and you can run it everywhere. So that's the design goal that we start uh, add to our solution. Everything packed in one container. Uh, next is the infrastructure requirements. Uh, we saw that uh, mono repo for git uh, for infrastructure is a good approach and we think that one infrastructure wrapper could contains multiple infrastructure manifests so uh, we have one infrastructure repo and we can have a multiple cluster there and that's quite a good approach because we can manage them from that point uh, using uh, gitops and uh, the same way as we used to work with uh, software we just can create pull request and add new infrastructure or change it so everything could be in one repo uh, also this repo infrastructure repo could contains different patterns uh, like terraform modules or kubernetes applications and we think that represent and we and we can could template that so uh, you can add own modules or like Terraform additional modules. It will be in future version and for now you can add own uh, set of Kubernetes applications uh, and that Kubernetes application should be represented as Argo CD application because that's the tool that we actually use in our system to reconcile Kubernetes manifest. And the user management uh, based on the fact that each uh, infrastructure should have one single admin user for everything and we use kclock for uh, user management where we need to uh, grant permissions for some additional and external uh, systems and also integrate this with some external providers and uh, perform the single sale on top of that uh, implementation is quite uh, simple so we manage users on different system uh, here not only github it's just github for example uh, we can use everything that support users and teams uh, we can use LDAP, bitbucket uh, uh, anything uh, that goes uh, in uh, user space and then with terraform modules we create uh, kubernetes clusters we create vpcs dns records or required resources and we deploy Kubernetes uh, and using Terraform, we deploy Argo CD controller and everything goes to remote Terraform state. 
Uh, after that, uh, we use uh, Argo CD. We utilize uh, the resources from the same infrastructure repository that uh, deploy Argo CD application and they uh, actually deploy everything that we need, like Helm charts, customizers. Uh, we could deploy login stuff and monitoring the same way as uh, any other software that you can imagine and you can deploy inside Kubernetes. Uh, so Initially, we create uh, this tool using POC concept uh, using bar scripts, and it was uh, quite good. I think that uh, it uh, very good approach to uh, create to create something with dirty hacks and bar scripts, and it works fine. Uh, but we can't extend. Uh, and we can't perform some extended things, so we, now we uh, move uh, all code base to go based reconciler, and uh, also we adopt uh, all possible community modules that are quite popular because uh, community Terraform community modules is the very powerful thing because it already tested by thousand, literally thousand of users. And we, we could get feedback from them and we could uh, implement own things based on that community models. So we make uh, some additional models that are actually works on top of that uh, community models and they are more human friendly. So uh, we try to design that modules using some design approach that could uh, have that opionated set, sets of defaults settings and uh, saying defaults. So that's uh, uh, actually we have in uh, latest uh, new version. Okay, uh, let me show you how it works. And from the perspective of uh, regular infrastructure developer, so as you see, we have some test repo with this is our infrastructure repo. Uh, it actually contains two uh, manifests, three manifests. One is uh, digital ocean cluster, uh, digital ocean based infrastructure. So we can uh, enable it and one using AWS and we set that to uh, true and uh, it's on the branch DevOps stage I will uh, commit and push that changes to to our main uh, repo uh, so we commit uh, start new clusters okay and I'll push that repo to GitHub and go to our repo to check. Uh, we, would, we should have uh, the new branch and we could create pull request with uh, the changes. Uh, let, let me see how it works. Okay. We got the checks. Uh, we see that uh, we will have uh, two, star two clusters installed and we would uh, review it. Uh, I will make that uh, review. <laughs> it's self-reviewed code and merge this uh, pull request. And that triggers uh, the pipeline. Uh, because we have that pipeline, let me show how it works. So here on the background, we have very, very simple uh, pipe, uh, GitHub action and it uh, could be Bitbucket pipeline or GitHub pipeline where we actually have a reconciliation loop with uh, our uh, Docker image. So we just define uh, environment variables and when we have some changes in Kubernetes or GitHub workflow or cluster dev uh, directories, it will just spawn new uh, GitHub action and we pass all secrets uh, as the secrets uh, on target repos repository. Uh, so we uh, will switch to the master and uh, this uh, goes to uh, 
uh, new action and we see that uh, this action produce a new invocation of our cluster reconciler so actual uh, github pulls our image uh, it's public so every, everything is open source and we start reconciliation of that uh, cluster so we uh, got uh, our winner and the first cluster is uh, on uh, Dell K8S test repo and uh, what is on background actual, actually we start a uh, pipeline that would bring uh, that change and create two clusters on different clouds uh, what on the background uh, as we see here uh, during after action started we parse uh, config files uh, from uh, our infrastructure definition and that files could, could contain different things like uh, they depended on different providers so we can choose provider type like here we have DigitalOcean and here we have AWS or we have uh, set different provisioners for a Minikube installation we have own provision on type Minikube and for example for EKS we could extend our possibilities uh, using uh, EKS provider and that provider provisioner uh, could have different settings like uh, instance, instance types uh, we can use spot settings here, we can add something as uh, additional uh, settings for kubelet, uh, we can redefine root models, uh, root volume size, and also we have that thing like apps, uh, so we uh, could define applications that could be deployed uh, for each cluster. Here uh, we see that uh, in this apps folder inside our infrastructure repo we have a wordpress application and this wordpress application is described as argo cd application so this argo cd application just go to uh, test repo uh, just the same repo and use the pass to uh, our helm chart and helm chart will store uh, nearby and that chart uh, would install uh, the public WordPress chart with some redefined values. Here we have some uh, redefined values for host name, for domain, and we say that we would use Let's Encrypt for our certificate, and we could set like DB uh, passwords for MariaDB uh, internal uh, for just testing purposes. They could be pushed to the repo, but we would implement mechanism that uh, would have uh, secret management inside. Uh, after we create this uh, state, uh, we got state files with the Terraform that actually executes different uh, stages, these different modules. As we can see here, let me show this pipeline works with the cluster and let me check what so it's still in progress and still uh, deploying uh, kubernetes at digital ocean and we should wait and next version would uh, support uh, parallel execution for different clusters i think next month it will be next two weeks to, it should be available and uh, after it finished, it uh, produced a uh, real cluster with, uh, in different, in, in different uh, zones and creates uh, VPC, create DNS records, then create Kubernetes cluster and push config files to uh, S3 storage. So after that, uh, that cluster creation, pipeline finished we got uh, the resulting cluster in uh, resulting cluster credentials in our s3 uh, or digital ocean spaces buckets so 
uh, during uh, that uh, period, if something goes wrong, like if we fail with uh, some settings uh, our, or we got some negative feedback from the, class, uh, from the cloud side, uh, we could uh, track that exceptions and produce some meaningful outputs or uh, per perform some actions that we could mitigate that uh, fail scenario. Like uh, if a cloud provider responds with some uh, problematic uh, uh, code, like try again later, so we could uh, work uh, with that and uh, reply uh, during the reconciliation uh, phase. And uh, what about uh, other things? So we uh, create on top of that uh, top of that stuff that's all open source and we try to engage another guys uh, from another teams uh, to work on top of that and for present moment we uh, have uh, four confirmed production customers that actually use that system uh, as the main reconciliation uh, tool for their infrastructures and we have 10 engineers working with uh, that project and uh, actually deploy that infrastructures for customers. Uh, we have five uh, new site spawned projects that projects are related to uh, things like uh, we create some class, uh, some additional domain names if you don't uh, have uh, so make everything uh, be uh, everything uh, clean and busy so we create also website with documentation with design goals and you can check it and as i said it's uh, very very uh, opinionated from our side but we try to uh, pack all our uh, experience there uh, and make that experience very smoothly for our customers. So as we see, we got uh, that uh, Coop config, and it could be downloaded uh, from DigitalOcean Spaces. I have, uh, I think, I have run out of the time, uh, but uh, we can just check that we got that. Uh, in DigitalOcean Spaces and another cluster would appear in uh, AWS. Okay, here is test repo and as you see we got uh, state files with, uh, for Terraform and uh, we can use that as extension so we can connect uh, with uh, some external uh, Terraform modules uh, using uh, state files. And we have the scoop config uh, that uh, we could use to connect our, our resulting cluster. Uh, we get that Kubernetes cluster and we install application using our add-ons. And that uh, we, what we have is, uh, let's download it, it's the authorization file. And this authorization file point us to Argo CD, uh, Argo CD that is used for base reconciliation uh, in uh, for our clusters. Uh, it's not really available because the pipeline is not finished yet, but in a few minutes it, it should, uh, should uh, be available. Uh, DigitalOcean add-ons uh, deploys oh, samples, we got no samples here. As you see, we have uh, that errors that don't fail even cluster, uh, don't fail our uh, pipeline, but we got uh, that error handling inside. So also we got that fancy logging, we could turn it to debug uh, level and uh, get uh, everything tracked and reconciled with uh, some fashion manner as we like that. Uh, okay, I don't think uh, we got that quickly, but uh, you can go and test yourself. 
Uh, we also have Slack chat. If you have any questions or you, you would like to contribute, we got that contribution sec section in uh, our website. And we are welcome for new guys uh, who could go and check this approach. Maybe uh, this could be helpful for your uh, work and uh, you can use the same approach to build own open source tools uh, to uh, go with your team that way when you have that patterns and you can just uh, build something sm from small from scratch using POC concept using uh, the language I actually know and then redesign it to some more powerful things and that's the main goal where what I'd like to share with you that you the sharing is a uh, caring so the good things uh, comes where you share your experience and you pack everything into something that could be used by different people not only to teammates uh, that's all and uh, thank you very much and we can go to chat to the slack channel of DevOps stage and I'm uh, very happy to be here with you and have a good night have a good time